Welcome everyone to this Birds of a Feather on Trusted AI. Do people know what a Birds of a Feather is? Who doesn't? Some people are shaking their heads. That means it's a session where the attendees contribute. <laughs> a big exodus. However, however, I do have a small reward. I'm going to give it to you ahead of time. It's dark chocolate. If you want to share it around, just, you know, people can have some. It's very good. It's very good dark chocolate. And I do have, you can take one for yourself. Now, the other thing, um, can, can people try to access the Slack? LFAI Foundation dots slack.com can can someone try that lfai foundation dot slack dot com i think sadev you already are in there i'm looking yeah is anyone not in that slack who can try to access i just want to see whether you need a an invitation anyone trying you can't take a chocolate till you try <laughs> Okay. Anyone got in to LFAI and data? LFAI data. LFAI foundation. Dot slack dot com. Okay. Nobody's put their hand up. Okay. Well, I'll get started, and I'll ask you in a moment. So this is this session is really to talk a little bit about what we're doing in the uh, Trusted AI group, now renamed to Responsible AI in the Generative AI Commons. And it's really to look for volunteers and people from uh, the community to join us. So we're hoping for volunteers. Even one volunteer out of this session would be great. Okay, so what we're going to do is explain the Responsible AI work stream at the Generative AI Commons, what we do, seeking enthusiastic volunteers, specific tasks that we're looking for people to help us with. And then we'll talk a little bit about the bigger picture because we have some very senior people in the room who can tell us about the overall goals of the Generative AI Commons. Okay, and tomorrow morning, we have a call at 7 a.m. Pacific. If you connect with me on LinkedIn, or just come by, I'll add you to the meeting invites, and uh, you can start contributing. And we do have someone, we do have one or two people in the room who will be on the call. Show of hands, anyone? Okay, we have two people, <laughs> we're going to be at least, and maybe by the end of this session, we'll have three, hopefully. Okay, so this is the overall picture of the general uh, generative AI Commons work streams within the LFAI. We're not going to talk about the other ones now, we're just going to talk specifically what we do in the responsible AI and what, what we're trying to achieve. And the leaders of that work stream are Suparna Bhattacharya from HPE, Andrea Svana, who works on Onyx, which is a model exchange format, and myself. Um, and we, we are, one of the first things we're working on is a responsible AI framework paper and then we'll sort of decide what our next goals are. Um, so, there are guidelines and regulations emerging, particularly in the EU, and in now, more recently, in the US, because of uh, President Biden's executive order. Um, the EU activities are very well established, and there's a lot of material around trusted AI in the, in the EU Act for artificial intelligence. The other, another activity is the NIST AI Safety Institute, AISEC, which some of us from the LFAI, Responsible AI Group, are in these work streams. So it's, what happened was the NIST, which is a US government uh, organization, they uh, put in a call for institutions to join this initiative. So they had many hundreds of applications and they ended up with 200 entities as part of the NIST AISEC 
One of them is the LFAI. And so some of us have joined the NIST AI Safety uh, Consortium, and we are in various of their work streams as well. And that is very, um, quite exciting actually, because the people in those, in those groups are from all, all kinds of entities across, across uh, US and outside. And the work stream is as listed, risk management for generative AI, synthetic data, capability evaluations, red teaming, safety and security. I volunteered for the risk management, the first one. There are three task forces now in each of these work streams. Oh, and so there's 15 altogether. And the expectation from us is that we spend one day a week on each task force. So it's quite tough and everything is being driven in Slack. So it's quite eye-opening to see how, how they're driving us to deliverables through Slack. Is anyone else in the work streams in the room? No. Okay, well, it is, it is eye-opening from the point of view of amount of learning you get, but also how Slack is being used. Um, as well as governments, local states are getting involved in generative AI and asking for feedback. For example, New York State just issued a list of guidelines for AI, for generative AI, and they're asking for feedback. Um, model weights, another topic, the, <laughs> which is more related to transparency, but companies are getting involved with sharing their views. So recently IBM responded to the NCIA uh, request, should model weights be shared or not? And uh, so that's uh, very relevant to the open model framework plus the um, tr uh, transparency aspect of responsible AI. We also um, <clears throat> were, had uh, someone called Bo Lee join us. She um, presented her NeurIPS paper, which was quite amazing. She did a survey of uh, dimensions of trusted AI and looked at a whole set of models and how they weighed up against the dimensions. And I do recommend looking at that paper if you want to join our activities, because we'll use that as a, we're using that as a base. And uh, we hope to get her back to review our work. And she won a Best Paper Award at NeurIPS um, at the end of 2023. And she also examined model evaluation tools. And uh, this is her summary. She has produced uh, something called Decoding Trust, which is a set of scripts which um, run, you can execute on a model to see where it, where it lies um, in, with respect to um, <clears throat> her, the dimensions that she chose uh, with adversarial robustness, distribution robustness, stereotypical base bias, toxicity, and so on. So, uh, and we have, a, we have, we recorded her also presenting this work to us. So um, if anyone wants to join us, that's, we can make that available. So we're working on a paper as our first deliverable and it's a responsible AI framework paper um, Haluk um, Demirkan, who's a professor at was, is it Washington, UC Washington University, Washington State University? Yes, is it, what's the proper name? The, the Washington, the lo locally here? Oh, University of Washington, okay. So he's a professor at University of Washington, also works at Amazon, and uh, he is uh, said he'll pull the paper together and get it sort of finished for us once we get some of the materials in. And, uh, and I've met some students from his university today, so they've said they will join us too at 7 a.m. tomorrow. We have someone called Oita Coleman, who's working with us from something called Trustmark, which is a voice, um, AI voice um, initiative. And she's going to 
right there, right up the uh, consumer requirements. Um, we're looking for someone <clears throat> to write a summary of responsible AI and po uh, post and pre-generative AI for the paper. Also, we would like to have a list of the main dimensions of responsible AI and compare them just in a tabular form of the EU um, Act of NIST. I've included the, the dimensions of NIST on the slide. And from this picture that um, Matt, uh, who was working with us and who presented the um, MOF, the Model Openness Framework, he's worked with, and he, he created this diagram of the dimensions that he saw were important for trusted AI. And um, we want to add sustainability to that list. And then we have someone, a volunteer here in the audience. Do you want to say a few words about what you're proposing to write in the paper? It'd be great. Do you want to, do you want to mic? Can someone? Okay. <laughs> And if you attended uh, Raghavan's presentation just now, it was amazing. So. <laughs> yes. Well, you see, you should join us because you'll be able to work with him. <laughs> so, uh, prompt is very central to how we communicate with the LLMs. So while you're developing an application, it's important to have prompt go through these uh, um, layers where the prompt is checked for uh, uh, everything that's responsible, starting from hate, bias, et cetera, et cetera. So having a prompt evaluator and then a response evaluator is something that I'm going to focus a lot on. So what goes into the input and then evaluating the response before we serve it to the, um, sorry, yeah. before we serve it to the customer. That's great, thank you. Well, we can leave that, you can hang on to the mic in case anyone else wants to say something. So. We're going to talk about the structure of this paper and go over the materials we have tomorrow morning. So if anyone wants to join, just contact me. I'll add you to the meeting invite. In this presentation, I also do have how to join the, the project officially, but it has a lot of instructions. <laughs> and we'll go through, briefly. I'll just run through the slides, but there's a lot. It's easier initially just to contact me and I'll add you to the invite. <laughs> okay. Another thing that we do is we're trying to get, get ready for the AI Dev conferences in Paris and then in Seattle. Paris, the call for uh, proposals is now closed. So, um, but I think we have some people who have accepted sessions there. So we'll pull to, any of you got a session there? You'll get to, okay. So um, we have, an, and we're also, so this is like an example of what we're doing here at this, um, at this event. And we had a meetup last night, which was very nice. And uh, so I hope we'll have a meetup in Paris as well. And then we're also working, you know, you can submit to the Seattle conference. Uh, it's open for submissions. And so if some of you are local, now's the time and we can help you if you join us and contribute, we can help you <laughs> with your submissions. Raghavan, are you going to submit to, to this one, do you think? Yes. yes. Anything, anything within the US, yes. Anything in the US, okay. Yes. And, whoa. There's so. There's two more. There's also um, AI Dev um, Hong Kong and AI Dev Japan. AI okay. Dev Hong Kong is um, August. Air Dev Japan is November, something like that. And Air Dev for Hong Kong, the CFP started, so um, you can still submit talks. Okay, yeah. thank you. So I'll, I'll add, I'll add the, I'll update the slides. Anyone interested in going to Hong Kong? <laughs> A lot of hands went up there, <laughs> and Japan as well. Okay, yep, we should uh, get those added. Do you want to talk a little bit about the bigger picture, Annie? Annie? And Arno, do you want to stand up, Arno? Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're the chairs of, of, um, of this, okay. right? Am I right? This, yeah. is, this yeah. is what you both uh, chair. So we, 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 we do what you tell us. Oh, no, no, it's a community <laughs> effort. By the way, I'm going to volunteer for the paper, the, um, 
the EU AI Act, that portion, and NIST, and other organizations which are doing... You I'll know, add you to the organization. I saw my name in there. I don't yes, even know why. Yes, I put your name <laughs> to something that you've already written. We, do you remember we did yeah. it together, the, right. the uh, different kinds of AI, the cool. terminology? Yeah. Ethical and, AI, yes. And I can do that one. Okay. The, the compile list of major related communities okay. projects. Okay. I'm, I'm going to, shall I edit the slides right away? Sure, yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's but being, no, it's being filmed. So. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's take you. So I can't back out. Yeah, <laughs> let's take okay. us back. So yeah. I just briefly introduced myself. Um, so my name is Annie Lai and my um, co-chair is Anald. And, and we have five work streams. Each work stream will have at least one or two work stream leaders. And Susan is leading responsible AI. And um, so we have all these five. So first of all, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of talk about generative AI comments. It was launched um, last year, last December. So it's been only like five months old. And we have uh, pretty good momentum. And so we have five work streams. And as you can see, I'm not gonna go through them. And it's pretty comprehensive. And some work streams, we got a lot more momentum. Some we got less. And responsible AI is definitely the one that's got probably the most momentum because it came from the, um, the trust committee. And then they moved to this work stream and there's a lot going on. And so for all these work streams, you don't really need to be an expert. You can come to learn, even if you don't know anything. Anybody's welcome. And you don't even need to belong to any member company. Anybody can contribute. Anybody can come and learn and participate. And it is pretty rigorous. We have these work stream meetings every other week. And most, most of them are like 7 a.m. PST. And so, or 8, 8, 8 o'clock PST. So um, for framework, um, this week you've been hearing about, you know, MOF, Model Openness Framework. That's our, the probably, um, the first high value deliverable. There's a lot of promise. And later, I, have, I think she ha you have a slide about MOF. And then mo la later, we can go through that. Um, yeah, we can, we can talk about it. I mean, you, if you probably have seen, heard it. Even Jim Zemblin talked about it at yesterday's keynote. And our attempt is to kind of, you know, um, encourage the industry to move towards more of op more openness when building AI systems. So this is our attempt. And it's not, you know, uh, like a standard or anything like that. It's more of, you know, a framework. And we want, the goal is to, for um, AI model producers to be, to have an opportunity to be very transparent about how open they are and where they are open. And for um, model users to be, you know, to be really clear about what they're getting. Right, so nothing is hidden in the contract or in the licenses. So that's that. Could you go back to the previous slide? And, and other work stream, this application work stream, and, and REC is leading that work stream. There's a lot, a lot going on there too. Um, in the AI, uh, in the application space, a lot of room to grow, but we don't have a major um, you know, initiative yet, but it's a very exciting field. And framework, uh, model and data is also very exciting. And um, education outreach, this is, if you are completely new to Gen AI, this is the work stream you should come because we have, we, uh, we just published a glossary, um, Gen AI glossary and, and education materials and also other webinars. additional webinars. Yeah, we have a webinar next week. Yeah, 25th, April 25th. And um, yeah, join the webinar. So the first webinar, we're gonna talk about the importance of openness in Gen AI. So, um, yeah, so there's a lot going on, you know, again, you can just, you don't have to belong to any member company and just join us. Uh, next slide, please. And we talked about that and how to join. I don't know if people can read, just go to Gen AI, you know, generative AI comments, Google it. The website should have a detail about how you join. It's, it's very easy. Else? <laughs> There's a lot of steps. A lot of steps. <laughs> to subscribe to the mailing lists and so on. That's yeah. why initially just contact me and I'll add you to the, meet, to the meeting right. invite. And, but then you can register right. properly. And anything else? Um, oh. Yeah, you just, yeah, join. And then um, uh, I'll let Arnold. Yes, I know. Do you want to yeah. give us a flavor of. We have people in Europe like me. So hi, my name is Arno Ross. I'm part of the Open Technology Group at IBM. I've been involved in many different open source organizations over the years. 
I've been doing open source since 1990. And so I've been around the block for a while. <laughs> and so I've been involved in, uh, in uh, Gen AI Commons on it for a little bit of time. But uh, I mean, w what's important to see is that it's actually pretty new and it gives people an opportunity to participate on so in defining what we're actually going to do. Uh, this basically is just, you know, some kind of guidelines on what we want to address, different topics of, uh, you know, of interest. But, you know, uh, the people who actually participate basically define what we do at the end of the day. So if there are things you're interested in, please join us and explain what you're interested in doing. And we can see if as long as it fits within a scope of what we are trying to, to, to work on, you know, there are definitely possibilities there. So you're all invited and as Annie is, you know, keeps insisting on the fact that you don't have to be a member. I think that's actually one of the good characteristics of a lot of the uh, Linux Foundation organizations. Even though they are member driven, member funded, you don't have to be part of a member company to participate. Everything is open, you can just join. Right. Anybody here who's part of another group that's doing responsible AI or models and data? Like, for example, we have someone from the IEEE who's joined us, um, who, who is also trying to sort of build a bridge between us and, uh, you know, the Generative AI Commons and the IEEE. So we're interested in connecting with other groups. So if someone's in, a, in another community, that would be great. Um, that's, a, that's another thing. Oh, do we have other communities that we want to engage with, Annie? I know we, we do have someone from the EU, uh, um, Adrian Gonzalez. He's involved with the EU Act, and he sometimes joins our meetings. And we have an EU expert right here. Yeah, oh, of course. <laughs> uh, I, Arno, yes. Arno, yeah, so, <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I do. mean, we like to, you know, I mean, AI, Gen AI is huge. A lot of people are doing Gen AI. And so we believe in collaboration. Like, we're talking to Eleuther AI, right? And then there's other, any community that you think we should talk to, we should work with, you know, I'm a big believer of not reinventing the wheels, and that's all work together. You know, there's no point to compete. And that's why we call ourselves Generative AI Commons. It's for everybody. Right. Yep. Very, thank you very much, Annie. Anybody else want to contribute at all? Or has a community? Are you we work with OSI closely. Yeah. Oh, yes. OSI. Yes, absolutely. Especially on the model openness framework. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh what? Well, what would you like? What would no, you like? Would to you do? just want to? Oh yeah. yeah. So so here, yes. Uh, I'm here representing the open source initiative, and we're also collaborating with Generative AI Commons around mm -hmm. our definition of open source mm -hmm. AI. Yeah. Yeah, and very likely we'll also incorporate some of because some of us work for companies, and we also have responsible AI initiatives within our companies. And what we, what we can also include some of in, in our paper, in our frameworks paper, also what comp certain companies, you know, who are willing to share what, what they're actually doing. So that's another, another thing we might do. So did everybody get a chocolate? Yes. Is the ones who got chocolates have to volunteer. <laughs> you didn't think it was free, did you? <laughs> you don't know Susan. <laughs> It'll be great if you would like to join us. It'll be fun. It's uh, it's you get to know other people and you do just a modest contribution and you learn at the same time and you learn how to collaborate with people you don't know, which is quite a hard thing initially. Um, I don't know if I know if you want to say anything about collaboration no, with people you don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, no, but so it can be intimidating at first, but you know, we don't bite. Uh, as I said, the meetings are open. So there is a public calendar. You can find all the different meetings that are happening during the week. And you know, if you don't know yet where you might be more interested, the right thing to do is basically to attend different meetings, see what's being talked about. And you'll probably be asked who you are if you want to introduce yourself. If you don't feel comfortable, it's okay to say, no, I'll just 
I'm just here to listen. It's okay as well. Nobody's forced to speak up. And usually, you know, this kind of stuff is like, I don't know if you have had experience in other organizations maybe, but typically, you know, at first you come and just listen, and then as you get a feeling of what's going on, and you found your niche on where you want to actually contribute, you can start participating in the discussion. And slowly you get, you become a, part, a participant and a member of the community. And it doesn't take much more than that. It's fairly progressive uh, thing. And uh, it, you know, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but uh, we all become kind of friends and colleagues. And it's an interesting, you know, I've, I've been doing that forever, as I said. And so for me, it's kind of second nature now. But, you know, you end up working with people from other companies as if they were your colleagues. And it's, I think it's a really It's a great way to network with uh, companies as well. If you're looking for a job and you're a student, that's uh, uh, another benefit. Or if you just want to change your job yeah. <laughs> and move so, somewhere else, it's a, you, you get to know more people. Yeah, I want to add one thing. So, um, so I host Gen AI Commons meeting every other week. And this is more like the umbrella meeting. And underneath the umbrella meetings, we have all these biweekly word stream meetings. So at the umbrella meetings, we like we a lot of times we would invite industry experts to come and you know talk about what they're doing or talk about their specific project. So it's a great way to learn. And if you are working with some industry expert that you think, hey, I, I like to you know, present my material to the generative AI Commons community, feel free to reach out to, you know, to me and, um, well, you can find me on Slack or just go to a generative AI Commons channel, Slack channels, you can find me there. And we'll just add you to the agenda. It's, um, that's how we learn from it, yeah. Did anyone manage to join the Slack channel just now who wasn't in it by clicking, by looking for lfaifoundation.slack.com? Oh, no, the QR code is Gen AI Commons, sorry. But could you just LFA, if you, LFAI Foundation dot slack dot com. I just want to see if you need an invite. I guess you need an invite. You need an invite, okay. You sign up and then they will send Yeah, I have to, okay. You have to sign up first. So you, you sign up, um, then you, you can join the Slack channels. Is it called LFAI Foundation? Yes. You can't find it. Dot slack dot com. Yeah. Does it not work? I'll fix the slide. Oh, you're trying. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's... Gen AI Commons dot org. <laughs> oh, there's a battle. The battle okay. of the name. Um. <laughs> Okay. The domain name, I think, is geneicommons.org. Yes. Because you always Google things, but I don't. I yeah, don't and, Google, so. and um, Annie, are you in the umbrella group going to um, collect the comments on the MOF? Geneicommons.org. <laughs> because we, are going, we want to send out a no, request so. for comments on the MOF paper. So we, that's something maybe we should do through your umbrella meeting. Yeah, we, we can't. So, oh, that's another thing. Okay, so, yeah, yes. good point. So uh, <laughs> May 1st, uh, we're going to have Matt, um, you, know, uh, you know, Matt White, he's been presenting MOF. Um, we're going to dedicate the entire hour for him to give us, um, you know, kind of, we call it a town hall. He's going to get into deep dive of this moth, um, and, and then we can ask questions. So I highly recommend that. Uh, well, we'll have everything recorded as well, but, but May 1st, um, that's when we have 7 our 7 a.m.? Yeah. Is it 7 a.m.? Yeah. I don't know. It's our, it's our biweekly meeting, right? The mm -hmm. Commons biweekly meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, he, uh, we're still collecting feedback. So you just go over there, and then you can comment on the paper if, if you have any feedback or questions. But... May, f is, yeah, it's May 1st, right? Yeah, so, so, and then after that, we'll do the frameworks. The responsible AI framework right. will be our next right. uh, deliver deliverable, we hope, if we get some of you joining us. Well, I think we're done, unless someone has a question or...
wants to, and I think you need to leave to catch your, to get your flight, right? Oh yeah, we do have a question. Please go ahead. Uh, so I'm wondering, um, I, I, I think I've signed up and I watched the, some recordings of one of the work stream. And I think it's pretty early on at the stage, right? Um, so are we uh, working on the some white papers or um, how do people um, can work to So, so here, here's like a white paper that we're working on. Here's the structure and it, where volunteers are needed. So this is something that we're working on as we speak. So tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., if you were to join our meeting, we will be going over this paper. We, we have sections that need volunteers. We have sections that people are already committed to. Yeah. So, yes, so that's, that's our next activity. So we'd love to have you. So yeah. just, just connect with me on LinkedIn and I'll send you the meeting invite or I've also put my email address here on the slide. Let me just go back. Right Malaika at us.ibm.com. For other subjects, if you guys want, think there's a particular er, era, uh, area that you want to write a white paper about, come to our workshop meetings and make a proposal. And then that's where you can, you know, enlist other people, like-minded people to, you know, write the white paper with you. Like Arnosa is very open and the, it's, you know, the community makes things happen. So you join us, if, you, if your boss say, hey, I want you to write this white paper, and you should just come to our work stream and ask people to volunteer and help you out, and then you can publish your white paper together. Who has worked on a white paper before? One, two, <gasps> people are scared to say that they worked on a white paper. No, <laughs> Three. But, and, and I think it's important to recognize, I mean, not all work streams are at the same state, right? Uh, they, they are like, you know, responsibility, I obviously, as Susan mentioned, it existed before JNAI Commons was started, so they have a bit more history. For the frameworks, there is already a paper that, uh, you know, has been talked about that Matt White uh, developed with a few other people. And so we're still in the stage of defining exactly what the priorities are going to be. And again, it depends on the people who are there and who, uh, based on their interests, right? So. Some of this has not been defined, so there are groups that haven't done anything yet, literally, like, you know, they haven't started a paper or anything yet, so. And the success of the community is from all of us, you know, yeah, yeah the people, yeah, so, um, and our contributions, which can be varied, including chocolate. <laughs> okay, but unfortunately, there won't be chocolate on those Zoom calls. <laughs> Virtual ones? Maybe, maybe, maybe we need to find a way of sending, maybe this could be something you could take up to the Linux Foundation board. That <laughs> we could... Virtual chocolates for the, for the community that contributes. Anyway, is, if there's, is there anything else? Any, any more remarks? I don't know if anyone wants to say anything about meetups. Any meetups coming up? There's somebody in the room who does a lot of meetups, but he's very, very quiet. Do you want to say something about your meetup plan or? Go on, tell, share, because uh, people may yeah. want to help you. Sure, well, sure. Yes, then so you I'm might a, get some help. I do community at IBM Research. Uh, we're relaunching the IBM Meetup Network. We're going to have plenty of opportunities to collaborate on local events and virtual events and hybrid events. Which so, can be responsible AI related. Exactly. So uh, <laughs> if, you're, uh, if you're involved in meetups anywhere around the globe uh, or have cool things to share, uh, definitely look me up. And Annie and Arno, I think every one of the events that you're looking at, the AI Dev in Hong Kong, whatever, Tim can help you with a meetup nearby. That is, yes, of course, of course. So, co you know, just co-located like we did last night. Okay? So, yeah, so we're, you know... We're, yeah, we we're definitely looking at Paris for AI Dev already. So. Or during, I mean, alongside, like we did last night. Yeah, or mm -hmm. day before, day after, whatever, during, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, so, 
So that's something, something to do. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you all very much for joining us, and we hope we'll just see you virtually soon. Thank you. <laughs>